Hey everyone, Wes here. I had a request recently from a viewer asking about how to deploy an Angular application to Heroku. And while the process is relatively simple, it can be a little bit tricky to get set up so that everything builds correctly. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to deploy an Angular application built with the Angular CLI to Heroku. So let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is to head over to heroku.com. And if you're not familiar with Heroku, it is a cloud platform as a service, and it's going to make it very straightforward for us to deploy our code um, to web. And it supports more than just a node backend. Um, it supports Python and Ruby, which I believe was the original language that Heroku supported, Go, Clojure, Java, just a variety of other languages. And so it allows us as developers to kind of just focus on the code and not worry so much about some of the DevOps type problems that might arise in attempting to deploy a web application to a server that we might have to set up manually. Heroku is just going to take care of that build and deploy step for us and it's going to be as simple as pushing our code to a repository hosted by Heroku. So go ahead and sign up. If you don't have an account, it is um, free to sign up and it will be free also to push your code to a free tier dyno that you can run on. So, so here you'll be able to see other applications that you've pushed to Heroku. And if you haven't pushed or hit a particular application after a certain amount of time, the dyno that it's on will actually sleep. And so um, you can see that with the sort of faded icon here with the three Z's, meaning that this is an application I pushed up a few weeks ago and haven't touched it since. So the dyno that it's running on is, is sleeping for now. So what we'll do is click new and we're gonna create a new app. And you can name it or Heroku will give it a name. We'll just allow Heroku to name it in this case. And then you're gonna to wanna to choose your uh, runtime selection whether or not you're in the US or closer to the US or, or Europe. And then we'll create an application. And so it's gonna give it a name here. Usually it's gonna be like an adjective noun followed by some numbers. Then what we're gonna do is we'll go down here and select our deployment method and we're gonna use Heroku Git. Um, you can actually deploy by pushing directly to a GitHub repository or to Dropbox. Um, we're gonna look at how to do it directly using the Heroku CLI. So if you don't have the Heroku CLI, the next step is to, of course, install it. So there's a link here. And depending on what your operating system is, there's gonna be a few different ways to install it. If you're on iOS, it looks like you can use Homebrew. Um, this particular tutorial is on Windows, so we're gonna use the, uh, the just the Windows installer. And if you're on Ubuntu, then you can wget the script here and the install script. I found it pretty easy to deploy on Ubuntu and maybe a little bit more difficult to deploy on Windows just because you're gonna to want to make sure you have uh, Ruby installed on Windows, which will take a few extra steps. So go ahead and download the Heroku CLI. And if you have a terminal window open that you're working in, um, you're just gonna to, going to wanna make sure you restart that after you install the Heroku CLI so that we can run Heroku commands. Okay, so let's head back over to our app page and Heroku actually just displays the instructions on how to deploy your application here. So it's really just a few steps. However, we are going to need to configure our Angular application so that a few things happen when our code gets pushed to Heroku. So let's take care of that step first. So you'll need to open up the directory that your Angular application lives in and then in the root directory you'll notice that there should be a package.json file. So this file actually just defines all the dependencies that our application needs to have installed in order to run. So if you look, you'll see a section for dependencies and some things in there. And then you'll also see a section for dev dependencies and um, some more packages in there. So Heroku is actually going to install everything it sees in our dependencies section here. So we actually need to move a few things out of our dev dependencies and put them up into our dependencies. And so I'm gonna take the Angular CLI and Angular Compiler CLI out of dev dependencies, and I'm just gonna move them up into our normal dependencies here. 
And I'm also going to move the TypeScript dependency out of dev and up into normal dependencies here. And we'll just make sure the commas are in the right place. Okay. All right, the next section we're going to look for is the list of scripts. And so you'll see a section called scripts. And when we push our code to Heroku, it's going to look here to see if we have any pre-install, which will look like this, or post-install scripts, which will look like this. And so these will obviously just get run either before or after our dependencies are installed. So in our case, we want to worry about um, what happens after our dependence, dependencies are installed. And we're going to run ng build AOT and then the target equal to production. Okay. So just looking through this command that is going to get run after our dependencies are installed. So ng, we're going to use the Angular CLI to build our project. And so if you recall, the ng build command just creates a compiled and built version of our application in a dist folder, which can then get served up in the browser. And AOT stands for ahead of time, and that defines the type of compilation that the application, like how the application will be compiled. So this is distinct from just-in-time compilation. In short, it's going to allow for um, just a faster application. And so yeah, the compiler is going to run once um, at build time. We'll just go ahead and, and use ahead of time compilation here. And then we set our target to production. OK, so the next thing that we're going to do is we'll just head down to near the bottom of this file. And then I'm going to add another section here called engines. And in here, we're going to specify the node and the NPM versions that we used to build our application. OK, this is useful because it will let us sort of like prevent any kind of version issues that we might have. So Roku is going to look here, and it's going to explicitly install whatever version of node and NPM we specify. If you're unsure of what versions you are running, just head over to the command line here. And you can just um, type in, for node, you can type in node-v, and you'll see that. And then for um, npm, the same applies as well. OK, great. So we just have one more step before we are ready to deploy our Angular application to Heroku. We need to create a small node server that we can use to serve up the compiled files that are in our dist directory. And for that, we'll use Express, which is a very lightweight node web framework. So make sure that you're inside of the, your Angular application directory. And then we need to npm install save express. And note that this is actually also going to add express to our list of dependencies in our package.json file that we were just editing. So let's go take a look at that file in our editor. And if you reload it, you should see that Express shows up here in our list of dependencies. OK, so let's go ahead and create our Express server. So for that, I'm just going to actually open up a new tab here. And we're going to call this file server.js. And so that should exist in the root directory of your Angular application. And this is going to be a pretty small file. Um, but let's look at what we're going to do here. So first. We're going to require express. OK, then we're going to create another constant called app. And we'll set that to express. And now we're going to tell express to serve up the, the set of static files that are created when our dist directory gets created when the app is built. So we'll say app use express.static. And then we need to point it to the dist folder. So the static function takes as its argument a path. And this double underscore dir name is just a node variable, which is going to return the path to the current directory. And the second part of this is the dist folder, which contains all of our static files. OK, and then we want to make sure that we start the application by listening on whatever the Heroku port is. So we'll have listen 
process that can be dot port or 8080. Okay, then there is the next part of this server, which is a little bit more complex, um, and it has to do with something called path location strategy, which is something that Angular applications use for routing. Anyway, so in order to set up our server properly, we're going to um, define a constant path that will require and then we're going to say app.get and then a lot and then a wildcard here. That send file path join. And so this little bit of code is essentially going to allow Angular to handle our routing instead of the server. So when we type in some subroute of our application, we're going to always make sure that our index.html file gets served for any other route that gets typed into the address bar. So when a GET request is made for any of our subroutes, um, we we want to make sure that Angular is the thing handling the routing and not this and not the server. Okay, and the last thing that I'm going to do here is just write some output to the console here. You could change this to specify um, that it's listening on whatever port that you're going to be listening on. In any case, I just want to write a little bit of feedback, letting us know that the um, server is running. Otherwise, it will just run silently, which could be fine too. Now, with our server built, we actually need to tell Heroku to run this file when the application starts. Otherwise, it won't serve up anything. So, we need to add that one final thing to our package.json. So, look for start in our start scripts. And instead of ng serve, we're going to say node server. JS. Okay, so back at the command line here, if you don't already have a git repository initialized here, you're going to want to do that, and you can do that just with git init. Um, and so that will initialize a new git repo here. And then the next thing to do is to log into Heroku. So if you've installed the Heroku CLI successfully, you should be able to type in Heroku login. And then here we'll just type in your email address and password. Okay, so now I'm logged in. And then we simply type in Heroku git remote a and then the name of whatever the application was when you created the new app at Heroku. And then just um, as you would any other git repository, we're going to add, so git add, and then git commit, and we'll say initial Heroku commit. And something to note here, which you probably wouldn't want to do if this were a real application, is you probably wouldn't in general want to commit a bunch of your static assets like um, images and things into source control. Instead, you'd want to rewrite the parts of your application that are serving these up and have them get served from um, like AWS or some other resource. And then uh, the command is just git push Heroku master. Okay, and you'll see this start to build. You can see that Heroku has detected that it is a node app, so that's pretty cool and it installs the particular node and NPM binaries that we specified. And then it's actually going to build our dependencies and install all of the node modules that are in our package.json file. Okay, once that's complete and everything's downloaded, it's going to run our build. So ng build ahead of time, target production as we specified. You'll see that the build has succeeded. You'll see that it gets launched and um, yeah, everything gets deployed. We can hit our application now at this URL. So now that it's deployed, let's go take a look. So now your application is no longer running on localhost, but should be running on Heroku. So this is actually live on the web and you can see that everything works as expected. 
So as I mentioned before, you may want to consider if you're serving up images rather than putting them in version control, actually rewriting your application, particularly if it's this gallery application, to serve the images from somewhere else that you might have them hosted, like AWS or elsewhere. Anyway, yeah, so it's really as simple as that. So you know you just need to take care of those few extra steps of writing the small node server in Express, making sure your package.json file has the correct dependencies, that it starts the server that you created, and that it properly builds your Angular project after all the dependencies have been installed. And then it's really just as simple as pushing that to Heroku. One thing I would highly recommend as a next step that you look into, if this is going to be anything more than a very small application like this, is to make sure that the application runs over HTTPS. If you head over to devcenter.heroku.com slash articles slash SSL, Heroku actually has a really good article about how to get set up using SSL here and just a few more lines of code in our express server to force any request coming in over HTTP to get redirected to HTTPS. But yeah, that's something that once you kind of get everything set up um, should be relatively straightforward. If anyone is particularly interested in seeing a video of setting up uh, SSL for the, a Heroku app, I'd be more than happy to make a video for that. Let me know how it goes for you. Hopefully you guys don't have any trouble deploying your Angular application to Heroku. And now that it's on web, it will be really easy to, of course, visit from anywhere and share with your friends and family. And it's also a great way to kind of show off your work as part of a development portfolio, for example. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you uh, subscribed and be sure to let me know if there are other topics that you're interested in learning about. All right, guys, catch you next time.